Listener Floki recently retired. Congratulations, eh? Awesome, awesome career. Thank you. Um, uh, Bath, went to Bath in 2011, is it? Um, yeah. Played 76 test matches, you know, 50 Super Rugby caps, 130 odd games for Bath. Talk to me, retirement. How is it? Um, underrated, um, I think. Uh, I think. <laughs> I was mentioning to you guys in a in, in a pre-chat. Um, no, I, th I think what 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 does put it on this level for me is obviously the fact that we uh, you know we achieved the ultimate success last year with South Africa. Um, you know that is a pinnacle, and it's you know it's something you, you hang your hats on. I'll hang my hats on that for the rest of my life. Uh, but you know, bar that, uh, what what an awesome career in, in my eyes. Um, you know, to play having to play professional rugby for so long. Um, to play both South Africa and in the UK, um, you know, it's it's literally a game that's taken me all over the world, uh, given me memories and experiences, um, you know. And on top of it all, I got I got paid to do it. Um, I mean, it's an awesome uh, time if I look back. Um, but on top of that, I have to say it is very nice not to be sore, uh, not to have to push weights around. Um, not to suffer, uh, not to have to ever run out in the freezing cold on the icy pitches again. Um, I won't miss that. Uh, but I tell you, I, I will miss the, the camaraderie and the mates that I've made along the time, the, the good times we have, you know, both on and off the field. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's, you know, that's kind of part of where, you know, why, why Scott and myself are, are doing this show as well, is that, you, you know, you... We, we go through careers where, you know, the focus is mainly just on um, on, on the field <clears throat> performances, winning or losing games. But there's so many friends that you make along the way, so many experiences that you have um, off the field, you know, that, that you can share as well and that, that um, plays such a pivotal role in who you become one day as well. And as Skog mentioned, I think you can, you can certainly... Um, hold your head up high with you know with an unbelievable career and to to be able to to finish it in the way that you did playing your last test match for south africa in a world cup final and winning it you know that's yeah. that's the fairy tale ending that anyone wants um and we'll, we'll we'll touch on the on the world cup now but what what i would like to ask is the the experience of playing um uh, in the uk you know for, for bath um you know so many players finish their careers in South Africa, they never get to, to experience the opportunity of playing overseas. How, how has that been for you and how has that changed the way that you see the game of rugby, see life and how has that sort of helped you to improve your game specifically? Yeah, I think the, I think the, the decision I made originally was uh, quite unique and quite uh, out of the ordinary back then. Um, you know, as you said, often guys would finish their careers um, either in South Africa or that or that move abroad uh, towards the latter end of their careers and, and sort of finish off in Europe um, you know something along those lines um, you know uh, I moved I would say just before the peak of my career really in terms of my performance I think um, you know it was in 2010 uh, we'd all just played in the Super Rugby final fortunately we lost that one um, you know, I was playing alongside Skulk and Dwayne in the back row. Um, you know, starting position there with the Stormers. We had a, an awesome, awesome side. Um, you know, things were things were really going well. There was only really, you know, we we're only really going to go upward from there. You know, maybe it didn't work out that way in the end. But uh, I, I sort of had to make a big decision for myself. You know, um, I decided I wanted to step out of my comfort zone, um, move abroad. Um, uh, and try something new, um, stand on my own two feet um, and experience something that, um, you know, is, is right for me then and now. Um, you know, and sort of having, having looked at, at the time of, timing of the move, uh, I just, you know, made my debut for South Africa in, 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 uh, in 2010, which is an awesome, an awesome moment in my, you know, my rugby career, obviously. Um, and there was always a chance that this may jeopardize my um chance of selection going forward um but you know that was it was a risk i was i was willing to take um and ultimately the decision i made to move abroad was was for myself um you know and i don't think i could have made a better decision i think ultimately i, I grew as a person became a 
um, a stronger character for it. And I think that's, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys can attest to that. that directly rubs off on your rugby. You know, ultimately the best, the best players are obviously super talented, but they, they're the best people. Um, I got exposed to uh, quite a lot um, this side, really, in, in terms of a different outlook to the game, different way of playing the game, um, experienced different players, different coaches from all over the world and how they play the game, you know, a mixed bag of Aussies, Kiwis, uh, the English, Welsh, Scottish, um, you know, we even had a few Americans in our team, um, which is great, um, you know, and then uh, obviously got the call back uh, in 2012 uh, under your captaincy, John, uh, which was uh, I had nothing fantastic. to do with it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I actually yeah. told him, no, I said no, but, but then... <laughs> well, I, he I didn't need, listen to you. So, <laughs> I needed some things. Um, <laughs> um, so, you know, I think in terms of that, uh, it was a good move for me. You know, I look back, it was the right decision to make. Uh, initially, it was only going to be a three-year deal, but three years turned into nine years. Um, you know, so I ended up playing the bulk of my, my, my professional career this side, uh, which, I've, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Scala, and, and actually for you as well, uh, I mean, the, the position that, that you guys played, um, and, 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 and the rugby that, 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 you, that you play in, in the UK versus what you see in the Southern Hemisphere, I just feel that you know, f for you guys probably it is, it, is, it is really tough over there, yeah. but also it provides an opportunity where you can really grow and, and enhance your, your skill as a loose forward and especially the way that the two of you play. Do I you think, feel that? I think the unique part of the UK is you've got, you know, the season sort of broken, broken up in summer rugby and winter rugby. And that's got a massive effect on the way, how effective me and Flo can be. So the start of the season, you can probably, um, you know, compare it to super rugby where the game moves fast, yeah. it's high scoring, it's frantic. And basically your main contributions comes through your work rate, your work ethic. And then it turns to winter rugby and that's probably the hard part. That's where we earn your money, where the game's a bit slower. And for maybe for, you know, it's a little bit more uh, boring, I would guess, uh, as a spectacle, a, a Southern Hemisphere guy to watch. But for us, that's where we really earn our stripes. Mm -hmm. It's so attritional and so physical. Um, but that is where Floki excelled in, you know, when he got, you know, rucks in and about close to him, where he can just fly to ruck to ruck and be effective. Um, but it is hard. It's a hard season. It's not only that, it's the length thereof, Floki. The length of the, the British season is... Something to be yeah, I mean, I mean you, you, you're pretty much playing three tournaments in one, uh, in one season, uh, all mixed up together. Um, you know, we've got a big squad here. Um, it's impossible to play all the games. And you try and throw tests in the middle of that as well. Uh, so it's, I think at some stage, as you say, I mean, it's just a question of survival. Um, you know, the weather comes in January, February time. Um, it's not always the best team that wins on the day. It's the team that's willing to grind it out on the day. Um, I don't really enjoy that part of the rugby, uh, but as you say, there's, there's two parts of the season. When the summer, summer rugby comes, you know, that's, that's, that's really where it is an exciting game over here. The pitches firm up, um, you know, people like to throw the ball around in the sun. Um, you know, and as, as John has alluded to, you know, that's where I can really show off my agility and, and you know, do what I'm supposed to. And let's, let's talk about the pitches. Oh, um, the wreck the, the 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 in December, January is not the nicest pl place to play, right? It's, so anyone who's gone to the wreck and they get fined every year, the changing room is the worst part of the whole wreck experience. Obviously the pitch, when it's raining, it's right next to the river. It's, I mean, there's no grass, it's mud bath really. But the, the changing room, John, is pretty much five by four. And there's one bathroom and it's the only place in the world, except for when I played, you know, Lentegeer out in Mitchell's Plain at Stellenbosch University, where I actually got changed in the hotel, you get on the bus, in my boots, and I just pretty much run out on the field. And then you walk across to them, there's ice cold lagers, there's masseuses, they've got about, you know, 150 square meter changing room compared to a little 25 meter square changing room just down the, just down the road. Part of the strategy, Flo, or what's, what's the story there? Look, I mean, I just, uh, I just arrived here a few years ago. It's obviously old school tactics that have, uh, you know, they just left in place. Um, you know, I don't make it too comfortable for the opposition. If we can uh, manage to rattle them in any way, um, you know, we'll, we'll obviously do that. Um, but I must admit, it is a, it is a pretty tough outfit uh, that, that uh, you know, business is changing. Floki, talk to me through your time at Bath. Obviously, just, I mean, 
personally great. I've been there a lot. It's a great town. You know, one of the prettiest places in the UK. Funnily enough, it feels like you're not in the UK, but that's what the old UK um, used to look like. Cambridge is a similar place. You know, it gives you that feeling. You want to go there. It's, it's a magnificent place. But as a rugby team, there's so much talent always. Big squat, um, great training facilities. Obviously, your, tra your playing field, the old recreational, is a little bit messy, but you've got a good home record. You know, mixed success in your time there. Came very close to play in a final against Saracens. Unfortunately, on the day, they were just a better team. Many coaches, uh, many players come and go. Uh, you were the constant, you were captain there. Um, was it an enjoy enjoyable journey? And will you, maybe when you retired now, would you think maybe you underachieved a little bit as a team over the period you were there? Yeah, we, uh, as, you, as you said, it, it was a bit of an up and down ride. Uh, you know, you've, you've stated the obvious. Um, we've, you know, had our fair share of, of coaches, um, you know, throughout my time here. Um, and obviously a new coach wants to bring a specific style of play, which requires a specific uh, squad to achieve that. And obviously new players, so players come and go as well. Um, and it ultimately results in you know, a loss of cohesion or, you know, a consistency there. Um, as you said, we got pretty close in, in 2015, our, our, our best year, at, at least since, since I've been in the club the last nine seasons, uh, reaching the, the Prem final. Um, we had a great squad that year. Um, you know, it wasn't meant to be for us. Um, but perhaps perhaps the, the other years, uh, you know, not, not quite achieving what we, we set out to. Um, you know, I think there was often a, a big case of we you know we're building we're rebuilding um you know that sort of didn't really allow us to get into our stride and uh um you know do what we set out to do which was you know become a, a championship team um you know we've obviously just changed the guard again uh you know after after todd uh, black added as left now we've got uh you know, an ex-play in Stuart Hooper taking over as, as director of rugby. Um, and Neil Hatley joining us again from, uh, you know, he was previously with us, uh, went to, to England, saw him through up to the World Cup. And he's back with us again now. And, and you know, he'll, he'll probably take the reins um, in the rugby department. So, uh, you know, I think in that sense, yeah, there's, there's definitely times where I felt, you know, we we didn't quite uh, do what we we wanted to um and that's under achievement um but 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 close at, at at one stage there's what it is right you know you yeah. can't can't do anything about it now and um we have the same a, same story story at the stormers in western province yeah, first when so. flow was there as well yeah, yeah so it's only first. constant there's flow um <laughs> <laughs> but no i think there's 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 many successes in all of that right flow but but let's talk about and and so many times we actually see that the consistency within a squad creates the success over, over a long period of time as well, um, or sustainable success, where sometimes, you know, when there's so much change, it's very difficult to, to create that culture that, that, that creates a winning situation as well.